Hey, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. My name is Nate Hallowell, and today we're going to be looking at how to filter galleries in our Canvas app with multiple selected items from a combo box. Now, just to preface this video, this method really only works with Dataverse tables. You can do this with SharePoint as well, but you will get some delegation warnings. But without further ado, let's dive right in and take a look at the app we're working in today. All right, so here is our nice and simple Canvas app for the day. If you recently saw the asset management video that we put out, Pragmatic Works has an awesome asset management tool that we've made available to the public. So definitely go and check that video out if you're interested in learning how to track assets in your organization and assign them. Uh, this app just kind of sits on top of that data set right there. So what we're looking at here are just some assets. We have uh, a Dell laptop, uh, some sort of standing desk, a regular desk, some monitors, some microphones, right? All these different assets. And here you'll see we also have an asset type for each of these. And also we have a total quantity of those assets. So for the LG monitors, we have five. And the goal for today is to look at how can we add a multi-select combo box with all of our asset types and be able to filter with multiple items here. So we have we want to see just the laptops and the tech peripherals and the desks. And on top of that, we also want to see with a minimum of one, two, three, four, we can use the slider to filter our data as well. So let's create a new screen so that I don't give away the secrets of how to make this work just yet. Let's do a new blank screen. And I'm just going to insert a vertical gallery and I'm going to connect my assets. And just to make this a little bit easier to read and look at what we're working with here, I'm going to add in a couple different fields here. The asset type is actually a lookup to another table called asset types. So we're going to say in this label, show me this item dot asset type. And we want from that lookup field, the asset name. So there we go, we have all of our desks and our tech peripherals, perfect. And now let's add one more label into here. And in this label, I'm gonna show the total quantity. So how many of those assets do we have? Perfect, simple enough. That is not why you all came here. You came here to hopefully learn how to filter this data with multiple selected items from a combo box. So. To do that, first let's insert a combo box. Uh, I like the new modern combo boxes, but you could do the same thing with the old style as well. So I'll just add a combo box here and I will make this data source for the combo box, the asset types. Again, that's a lookup table that I have. So if I hold Alt and I click this, we see all of our asset types right here. Tech peripherals, laptops, furnace, desk, so on and so forth. Perfect. So the thing we need to understand about these combo boxes is that if we allow multiple selections, you'll see that that's actually a property over on the right hand side to allow multiple selections, that's a true or false statement. So if I hold alt and I click this right now, it only lets me select one item. However, if I come and I turn this toggle on to allow multiple selections, now you'll see that this turns to a checkbox and I can select multiple items here. Perfect. So that's step one is to make sure that your combo box allows for multiple selections. The next thing is we want to filter this data. So let's go to our gallery and I'm going to go to the items property right now. It's just connected to the assets table. There's no filtering happening. So I'm going to get rid of assets and I'm going to do a filter statement. So I want to filter assets. And then the logical test here, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So I want to say where the asset type is basically part of the selected items here. And there is a property of the combo boxes called selected items. Now, if we did not allow multiple selections, we would just want to use the combo box dot selected, but because we're allowing multiple selections, we want to reference the combo boxes selected items. Now what that does is it basically puts all of the items we've selected in this combo box into a table in the app. So let's take a look at that. So we want to filter the assets where the asset type
And again, that is a lookup field. So the asset type, we need to use dot notation and we're gonna reference the GUID column. So asset type dot asset type. And we wanna see where that is, basically if that is in this combo boxes selected items, then we wanna show the data. So this is where this might not work for SharePoint data, but it works great for Dataverse data. So where the asset type dot asset type is in, whatever this combo box is called, this is currently called the combo box canvas two. So I'll just copy that name there, come back down to my gallery and I'm gonna paste that in. And I wanna say where that is in the selected items And specifically, that is a table. So that is a table of the asset types that I selected. And because I'm comparing the GUID on this side, I need to compare the GUID on this side. So I need to use combo box dot selected items dot, and then I need to put in the GUID column. This is where it kind of tripped me up for a while. I thought that maybe this wasn't possible because the IntelliSense is not telling you that there are columns that you can reference in the selected items. You have to just kind of manually force your way in there. So I'm gonna do my GUID column, asset type. And as soon as I close my parentheses there, you'll see that all the errors go away. And it even accounts for the fact that this one might be blank. There might not be any selected items. So first let's go up and make sure that that part works fine. So I'm going to choose laptops and I get one. I'll choose tech peripherals, desks, and you'll see every time I add another selection here, I'm getting more items. And it also works when I remove those items from the selected items here. If I only wanna see desks and chairs, it works beautifully. And as I have no selected items, it's showing me all the unfiltered assets. Uh, typically in the past, I would have had to put in some sort of uh, statement to account for if this is blank, but we don't have to do that anymore. Now to take this one step further for the purposes of this video, let's also filter this by, we'll use some sort of slider uh, to show the number of items. So let's go up and let's add another control to our app and we'll put in a slider this time. So we use this slider as a way to filter the amount of items. So let's configure the minimum and maximum values for this slider. For the minimum value, I just want that to be zero. And for the maximum value, rather than hard coding a value here, let's take a look at the asset table and return the one with the highest number of total items. So we can use the max function here from assets and specifically from the total quantity column. That's gonna return 15, and we'll set the default value to zero. Just to make sure that works, let's put a little text label right next to this. And here we'll show slider, it's probably slider two at this point. Yeah, slider two dot value. So if we go up into play, as we drag the slider, the number changes. Perfect. So now let's add one more logical test to our filter statement to allow this slider to become a filter. So I'm gonna go back to the items property of my gallery and I'll format the text just so that this is all a little bit easier to read. So starting here down on the third line, this is our first logical test of this filter statement. To add another logical test, all we need to do is add a comma at the end of this line I'm gonna go down to a new line and then we can add a second logical test. You can add n number of logical tests to your one filter statement. So here we'll say where the total quantity is greater than or equal to slider to dot value. So let's go back up into play and let's make sure that both of these filters are working in conjunction with one another. So if I wanna see um, you know, only things that we have eight or more of, I can slide right there. And if I choose something other than a laptop, I should see no items in my gallery. Perfect, if I move this back down, I wanna see only things where we have two or more. 
and I'm going to remove desks. There we go. So we got this working perfectly. So we have multiple selected items. We have no delegation and we have multiple filters. So hopefully this helps and takes away a little bit of fear about filtering with multiple selected items, uh, especially with Dataverse and with delegation. We don't have to worry about any of that using this method. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.